Okay, let's turn the light up so that we've got two stops of overexposure on the background. Now you can see what effect that has. And as you can see, it's not very pretty. So now we measure the light on our subject. And at the moment we're getting F8 decimal 2, which isn't enough, so we now turn the light up a bit. And that's it, we've now got F11 exactly, which is what we're going to set on the camera. So let's take a shot now with F11 on the camera, F11.5 or F11.5 on the background, so the background is exactly half a stop more than the subject. And see what we've got. Of course, if you don't want such clearly defined shadows on the cheekbones in here, you can always put a simple reflector to bounce some light up. That's just a matter of personal preference. It doesn't affect the exposure in any way. Well, of course, that's fine if we have a 10 feet distance between the subject and the background as we have here. But what if we don't have that much space? Well, let's move Louise a little, back a little bit and see what happens. The distance is now just three feet. So let's see what this difference that makes to the light reflected from the background. The background lights haven't changed. So all that we're going to do now is to take a shot just of the head. Now this is the silhouette shot again. So what we're looking for, of course, is exactly the same result that we had before. The only difference after all is that the model is now only three feet from the background instead of ten feet. So we'll take a shot. Well, as you can see, we've lost the silhouette effect. Not only do we not now have a silhouette, but we also have what we call light trap, which is light from the wider area. That's these areas over here, over here. And the light from these areas is coming in and lighting the sides of the hair. In fact, if I take the hair off, which you can't normally do with person, you can see it even more clearly. And that is not really something we want, but it's inevitable if you have a large expanse of white with light bouncing off of it at all angles. Effectively, the background has just become a large reflector. Let's put it back together again. She feels better now. We put the light on her back where it was before, or as close as we can get it. And of course, we meet the exposure to make sure it's correct. And again, that is saying F11, which is what we wanted to say. So, this theoretically should be exactly the same exposure as we had before. But unfortunately, as you can see, the fine detail in the hair has been totally destroyed. That's what happens at very close distances. Of course, there is another alternative, and that alternative is to have an illuminated background. There are a few on the market which are basically just a large softbox and you plunk the model in front of the softbox and that gives you a pure white background. Now that is a very useful tool to have in some situations however the problem with the light wrapping around the subject onto the sides of the face this sort of thing and getting where it isn't wanted is exactly the same with one of these large softboxes as it is with a background that's lit with lights and the problem with the hair being damaged at the edges is even greater because with the backlight the light is coming straight towards the camera this arrangement the light is coming at an angle and bouncing off again at the same angle each side doing the same thing so that very little light is actually bouncing forward